This is way overdue, but as they say, better late than never. Hi, Brian here and welcome to my channel where I feature eye-catching art and eye-catching things. Thanks for joining me today everyone. Today's video is another painting time lapse which was meant to be released for International Women's Month last March and is part 3 of 4 of a portrait series celebrating the most influential women in my life but work and life happen and I got swamped. But you know, we should be celebrating the women in our lives 365 days of the year, am I right? Folks, I'd like you to meet today's muse, Ana Fernandez Pablo. Who is Ana Fernandez Pablo, you ask? Well, she's my grandmother on my mom's side, and to everyone in our family, she is otherwise known as Nanay, which means mother in many Filipino languages. She was born September 1st, 1939, which makes her 83 years young this year. It doesn't matter your exact relation to her, in our circles of family and friends, if one was younger than her, you simply refer to her as Nanay. My brothers and I did a lot of growing up in Nanay's care while our mom was working abroad in Arizona, United States as a caregiver. She's a mother of 5, grandmother of 15, and a great-grandmother of 17 by my count. I may have missed some and there could be more of us as most of my relatives are back in the Philippines which makes it keeping track kind of tricky. But anyways, each and every one of us were at some point raised and taken care of by our nanai, especially my cousins, brothers and I. As a fruit vendor, she taught us the importance of hard and honest work. I remember countless afternoons when my brothers and I would get picked up by our grandfather and his tricycle after school, and we would meet Nana at her market stall where she would treat us with ice candies made from her perfectly ripened bananas, mangoes, and avocados while we rested on her rattan stall bench. She is a devout Catholic but also believes in many folk superstitions and practice holistic healing too. We were avid churchgoers and taught to pray throughout the day, most especially at 6 p.m. I still don't know what the significance of 6 in the evening was, but we had to do it then. We even had a special grotto with a statue of the Virgin Mary in our small back garden to do our daily 6 p.m. rosaries in. My brothers and I would wake up and start off the day with a morning prayer. Even as small children, we would carry out household chores right after, like washing little things like our underwear and socks tidy up and do a quick sweep and lampaso of the bedroom floors all before breakfast was served. And after school, my brothers and I took turns watering the plants by the grotto and sweeping around the back garden. In retrospect, this taught my brothers and I some pretty important life skills and discipline as young kids, which is a routine we kind of forgot about and lost once we moved to Canada. I used to be deathly scared of lightning and thunder until Nanai told me a story explaining why we had lightning and thunder in the first place. It turns out, according to her, that there were ways God would let us know that it was about to rain. And of course, with rain came plenty of water that the plants and trees would need to give us lots of food, fruits, and vegetables to enjoy. I would remember this time and time again, and gradually, I lost my fear. And I think Nanai's reassurances were also partly why I'm a pluviophile. Another core memory that really stuck with me is the story of the all-seeing grains of rice. One day, Nanai was showing me how to cook rice, but more than that, she was teaching me to value everything we have and not to waste even a single grain of rice. While washing the rice in its pot, she held a single grain up close to my eyes, pointing out that the two tiny dark spots on the grain I was staring at then were a set of eyes that observed everything we did, and if they noticed that we were being wasteful, they would grow root-like feet and walk away to find someone else that would appreciate them more. Cute, right? A lot of my early understanding of the world and sense of right and wrong came from Nana's teachings and stories. These early lessons have given me the foundations, the moral fiber and principles to see the good in things and people, to respect nature, to take care of the people we love, be empathetic, and not to take things for granted. Well, thanks for sticking around to this point and I hope you liked hearing a little bit about Nanai and watching her portrait come to be. If you liked today's short video and would like to see more like it, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share to folks who might appreciate it. Comment down below if you have stories and memories like these of your Nanai. You know what? Please go give your Nanai a call, pay them a visit, and give them hugs and kisses. Many thanks everyone and I hope to see you in the next video.